This Project TT is firmly in the final stretch. With all the mods we've done to the car, it is truly fantastic to drive. Just because we're in the end game for modifying this car does not mean we can't improve it, however. Last episode, I laid out the roadmap of what I still want to do to this car. Today, we're starting that plan, beginning with an incredibly underrated transmission mod. What we're upgrading today is a little bit obscure if you're not well versed on how clutches work. The clutch system is hydraulic. When you depress it, you're moving a piston inside the master cylinder, sending fluid through a line. This hydraulic fluid translates force through something called a bleeder block and finally into the clutch slave cylinder. The slave cylinder activates the clutch fork, disengaging the clutch, which is when you're able to shift gears. Today, we're upgrading the performance and reliability of the bleeder valve. This is an ECS tuning billet bleeder block, and it's a bigger upgrade than you might think. It's an upgrade for two completely different reasons. The first of which is that the stock unit is made out of 20 year old Audi plastic. In my opinion, you should replace as much of that as you can. It's not if it'll crack, it's when. This is made out of metal, so we don't really have to worry about that. Believe it or not, the other reason we want to replace it is performance related. This acts as a direct bridge between the force you apply with your foot on the clutch and the actual action that the clutch does. Now, you would think there wouldn't be any restrictions on this line, but that's not actually true. The fluid channel in the stock bleeder valve is actually narrower than the hoses leading in and out of it. This restriction makes it harder for fluid to go through it. By design, this makes your clutch feel a little bit more numb. The narrower flange section acts as a sort of harmonic filter, and it acts on a lot of the vibrations and feel you'd get from the clutch itself. That's great for a daily driver, but for performance, clutch feel is really important. That's exactly why the bleeder block we're installing today removes that restriction. So this is going to improve performance and reliability, which is a double win in my books. Most of the manual Volkswagen-based transmissions have this. No matter what car you have, it's a really simple install. One of the main things that may be just a little bit different is what all you have to remove to get to the actual unit you're replacing. On my car, I had to remove the intake and the battery. I just found a huge broken pipe. That's kind of insane. That is not supposed to be broken. See what I was saying earlier about old Audi plastic? This stuff loves to break. I'll research a long-term fix for this, but for now I just moved the heat shrink down a little bit and reactivated it so that it's sealed. This should definitely be good enough to hold me over for a little bit since this isn't the most critical hose in the car. This car's requests never end. But now that that diversion is taken care of and the battery covers off, we can see what we're actually replacing. It's this guy right here, and you can see on mine it looks like it actually had been leaking at one point. So I guess this upgrade is a fix at the same time. This is full of fluid, so I shove some paper towels underneath in preparation. Any job where you're dealing with fluid can get a little bit messy, so better safe than sorry. There are two metal clips on either side of the bleeder. These help the O-rings stay in the right position to seal the line. And to remove the old bleeder, these are kind of the only two things that need to come out. Then you can just slide it right off, but be ready for fluid to get everywhere. It's not under any pressure or anything, but it is full of fluid, so it's gonna drip out. Now that the piece is out of the car, we can get a better look at it. Both of the clips were broken as I removed them, so those could have definitely been causing the leak. Either way, the billet piece is definitely going to be an upgrade. The ECS kit comes with replacement O-rings, but that is where this can get just a little bit confusing. It comes with two standard O-rings, but you need to remember this kit is designed for multiple generations of these transmissions. If you have a Mark V or newer based car, then just use the O-rings it supplies. But if you have a Mark IV based car, like mine, you're going to need to reuse a different style of o-ring that comes on the car. The actual transmission side you can use the standard o-ring but for the other side this is what you need to use otherwise it's not going to seal and it's going to get everywhere. When you do get the o-rings replaced you can snap everything back into place and get ready to bleed the system. 
Bleeding this is nowhere near as difficult as bleeding brakes. This aftermarket bleeder valve has a one-way valve, meaning air can get out, but nothing can get sucked back in. All you need to do is crack open the bleeder just slightly and start depressing the clutch. You'll see air bubbles come out. The only way you could suck in air is if your brake fluid reservoir runs out of fluid, so you want to top that off as you do this. My approach was to pump the clutch a few times, and then I would check the level in the brake reservoir. I would repeat this until I didn't see any bubbles coming through the line anymore. Then you can tighten the bleeder valve. Unless this is tightened, you're not going to have very much or any pressure in your clutch. You'll know you sucked in air or have a leak if you press in the clutch and rather than springing back up, it stays down there and there's almost no pressure behind it. First place to look is to make sure that your brake fluid reservoir is full. Once that's done, you can button everything back up. I didn't buy this car in a perfect condition. In fact, it was hardly running when I did buy it, which is why I got it for such a good deal. Some people may think it's a little strange to buy a broken car that needs work, but I think it helps you bond to it. Plus, you get to learn a lot on the way, which is a lot of fun. One of the things you'll face buying a less than perfect example of a car is missing trim pieces. This can be kind of fun because if you want to replace them with OEM pieces, you need to look for used examples. This is an older Audi, so 90% of the time, most most of this stuff is way more expensive than it has any right to be. But that just makes it even more exciting when you find a matching part in good condition for a good price. Over the course of my ownership, I've been collecting some pieces to replace that this car never came with when I bought it. I think this is the perfect week to start installing them. The first piece I'm replacing is this selection of buttons down in the center console. I have had to use my key to open my trunk since I bought this car, so I am very excited to finally have a button for this now. This piece was not necessarily a hard to find piece, but it was egregiously expensive in the States. Over the course of the past few months, I had seen a few of these legitimately sell for around $200, which is way more than I would ever spend for something like this. I'm glad I waited because this one was nowhere near that price and it actually made sense to buy. So much better with that there. Now we don't have to worry about those buttons. We're slowly gonna increase the quality of this interior and I'm excited because it's making it a nicer daily driver. The final broken interior trim piece on my car is this. The knob was missing ever since I bought the car. It functionally works just fine, but unfortunately with this specific model, you can't just buy the knob. So I've been looking for forever to find the entire assembly for sale, once again, for a decent price. This one popped up recently for a really good price that I couldn't turn down. And and now that we have this installed, it means that our interior has every single button and every single trim in a working and good condition. That's a small victory, but honestly, it's a victory nonetheless. It makes this feel a lot less like a project car and more like a car. Along the same lines, there's been a hole in the front carpet for as long as I've owned the car, and I finally ordered a replacement. I am a tad irritated that it looks a little bit sun faded though, so we may have to dye it or get it to look a little bit closer. Either way, major improvement that I'm totally stoked about. So let's get back to the bleeder valve. This mod is incredibly cheap and honestly it may be one of my favorite cheap mods out there. It's a bit difficult to describe what kind of a different feeling this bleeder valve causes. It made me realize that before the bleeder valve there used to be a small delay between when I pressed down the pedal and when the clutch was actually activated and I could shift gears. That's entirely gone now and the clutch feels so much more direct. You also get just a bit more feedback through the pedal whenever you're actually engaging the clutch. I could see this being useful in learning the grab points for hill starts or something like that. Or just getting super used to it so that you can shift faster. In other words, it's a fantastic upgrade. The metal's also going to be so much more reliable. I read on some forums online that you can drill out the restriction in the stock bleeder valve if you want to just increase the performance. On all those forums it says it gets you about 85% of the performance that this upgrade does. But in my opinion, the billet bleeder valve is cheap enough that you should probably just do this. You get the reliability, which is huge in my opinion. This car is really starting to come together and I couldn't be happier. 
Thank you so very much for taking time out of your day to watch my video. The support we've been getting is insane, and it means the world to me. If you enjoyed the video, learned something, or want to see more, consider dropping a like and subscribing for more. It's the best way you can support me and my content. Either way, I'll see you guys in the next episode. Thank you again for watching. Have a wonderful day.